If I asked you what makes a compelling story, many people would agree that it would have to be one that makes you think about the different ideologies presented in said story. Some questions the philosophers themselves have debated for centuries, like capitalism versus socialism, dump trucks or mommy milkers, questions that really make you think. Alright, enough with that Socrates bullshit, few stories represent this discussion better than Fallout New Vegas, one of the best games I've ever played despite the fact that it looks like it was made for the Commodore 64. But I played through the entire game of Fallout New Vegas, which, for some reason, I thought Kanye's song Respectable Upstanding Black Individuals in Paris was actually called Respectable Upstanding Black Individuals in Vegas. Why'd I mention this? Well, maybe it's a sign that I can answer the questions we still argue about to this day while finally finding out who was in Paris. I mean, Vegas. We get the classic opening intro where I prove the male refractory period is a lie as I soiled my panties twice consecutively, first when I saw this incredible ranger armor, and then again after he Fortnite victory royale all over this dude in a Metal Bugs Bunny cosplay. We're told about the classic Fallout history, check out my other video for info on that where I played every Fallout game, link in the pinned comment, and the main conflict in Vegas. Hoover Dam powers the entire Mojave, whoever controls it controls New Vegas. The NCR dropkicked the Legion a couple years back, but after a quick anime training arc, the Legion is now back stronger than ever. Also, there's a dude in New Vegas called Mr. House, who brought Detroit Become Human to real life but the robots are armed with rockets and machine guns, so there's probably not going to be any robotic racism in this one. I'm a courier who was supposed to bring a platinum chip to Mr. House, but my hands are tied and my grave is being dug. Instead of shitty jokes, I'm not going to disrespect one of the most iconic dialogues in gaming, so I'll just let it play. Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face, but I ain't a fink, dig? made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. After waking up excited because I finally get to see which religion was right, I realize I didn't actually die. Now, one of the best things Fallout does is they make the character creator as immersive as possible. It's the start of the game and you pick your dude, Doctor asks for your name as I give the only correct answer, and then he asks if he fixed your face right and then tells you to go and test the Vigor Machine, which is something fantastic in this series. It gives near infinite replayability because each one provides you with different perks and special throughout the game. These are my stats, which I think are pretty optimal for New Vegas, and the lack of charisma is an accurate depiction of my life, so the immersion is still there. Finally, we play 20 questions, which is supposed to pick my play style, like dog, cat, house, shelter, hotel, Trivago. After all that, this dude recommends wet farts as my tag skills. I just picked gun, speech, and repair as my tags. For my perks, I got early bird for stronger days and weaker nights, and good natured because I'm a pacifist at the end of the day, and about as pacifistic as Civ 5 Gandhi. Doc gives me my new Pip-Boy, which is the only thing I don't really like about this game. The drip is exquisite, make no mistake about that. But having everything on this small Apple Watch clone means there are more menus on menus that you have to stifle through to pick items, quests, your map, stats even, which is a little too much for one Pip-Boy, honestly. I breathe that sweet, irradiated, contaminated poison they call air as I meet my savior, Victor, a robot who wandered to this town one day and and decided to stay for some reason. I get the sunny smiles where New Vegas activated its first trap card, Sympatry. With no money to dish out on a tier 3 subscription, I try to impress her with my marksmanship. Way off, it's the side of the backboard! I go back to town and we see the Powder Gangers vs. Good Springs heating up rivalry of the century. Now, last time I did side with the town, so I am gonna see what the Powder Gangers give you in this run. I go to the gas station where the runaway from the Powder Gangers is holed up and say, yeah, yeah, for sure, I'll help you, no doubt about it, before introducing his cranium to my 10 millimeter. I meet Joe Cobb who's just standing around as if he's about to tell his mom, no, it's not a phase, and we plot to take over the town. It's pretty much the same if you join the town, you ask the doc for medical supplies, literally tell the saloon owner I'm murdering your friends, give me weapons, and he obliges, and then we get going. I blow Trudy's left arm off and she still keeps going, dear Neptune, before introducing the doctor to my previous residence six feet underground, and 
I guess I graduated from Sympatry to Incel College, which honestly, after doing all that, I feel kind of guilty after I murdered the town who helped me get back on my feet. Yeah, I still took their stuff though. And Easy Pete was hiding. Apparently I had to kill him too, but no one gives a shit about Easy Pete. Joe tells me to go to the Powder Ganger prison base and the villager says what we're all thinking. Damn. But it does show that in Fallout, you actually have freedom of choice and there's no moral restriction as you can be whoever you want to be. Imagine giving this game to Stalin, for example. He probably would kill Good Springs and the Powder Gangers before setting up his own little gulag. We set off for the prison. I go to their leader, Eddie. The next mission is what I wanted to do. I had to redeem my sins of helping the Powder Gangers against the town. And after contemplating seppuku, I decided I'll just get the NCR. The next quest has me learn about an NCR. NCR attack, which the gang fears is coming, so I tell them, yeah, for sure, I'll go find out. But in reality, I color my hair, get some teeth implants, and practice my fluency in rat. My dumbass thought the lieutenant would give me classified information, which surprisingly he said no to. So I decide to go to Prim and continue the main mission, and I save the sheriff to prove my loyalty. The dude who tells me where Benny went actually also told me the NCR was planning an attack on the prison, so I go back to Lieutenant Hayes, telling him I know, and I want to help out. And he says, yeah, alright, go talk to Sergeant Lee. Now, Lee, looking like the Russian convicted of war crimes a couple weeks ago, starts the mission, and I might have went a little too ham with my new flamethrower, as after the Powder Gangers die, Lee actually turned on me, so I had to take him out. But with no other NCR nearby, yeah, it was actually the Powder Gangers. Yes, a hero to us all died in the line of duty. Rip, sir, we salute you. Those Uvalde police officers could learn a thing or two from this guy. I meet up with like 50 different NCR soldiers and wipe out the rest of the Powder Gangers. After telling the lieutenant I butchered Lee, I made my way to Novak. We get to this crack had excited he won the lottery, which, after talking to this dude, I find out was a Legion-led lottery to kill almost everyone in the town because, and I quote, there were too many hookers and druggies in the town. Now, this might be the Wild West, but it definitely has the look and now feel of Saudi Arabia. So, the lottery killed everyone, broke this guy's knees because he got second, and the winner got to leave scot-free. The Legion put everyone on a cross, which worked out great for Rome last time. And, uh, yeah, these last two missions really really give you a feel of the principles of the NCR and the Legion. NCR is more about personal freedoms, whereas the Legion focuses on order. There were some prisoners who were taken, so I tried to save them, because like any human being, I was mad at the Legion. They ended up ragdolling my ass like a Barbie doll. Second time around, I see an NCR patrol, and all three of my brain cells got to work. I draw the Legion away to the ambush, and when the ops see each other, they let loose, killing the Legion for me and giving me some sweet rewards. I untie the prisoners, see three to four more Legion soldiers, soldiers and nope out of there real quick. Before we continue, I found exclusive footage of two Civ Lifer subscribers duking it out. As you can see here, when these two fight, tectonic plates shift and they even start flying as you can observe. So subscribe and hit the bell to not only get a chiseled Greek god body and six inches where it matters, but to, more importantly, not miss out on future content. My next stop on trying to find love after... <laughs> goes about as well as in my real life, and she changes the subject immediately. Immersion is still on point, this game's an absolute banger. We get to see the big dinosaur town before we meet Manny in a top tier mission in this game, it is dope. Now, he knows where Benny went, but he wants me to go beat the ghouls in Fallout's version of Kino Dertoten, who in turn will leave if I take out the creepy Thanos fanboys, who in turn want me to take out Rambo to get to the stealth boys, who in turn wants me to find his lady ghoul who the monsters... Yeah, you know, it's you can just kill one of these groups and just be done with it. On my way to Boulder City, I meet the lonesome drifter whose dad went to get cigarettes at a young age and is now trying to track him down, so as you can see, even the apocalypse can't stop dudes trying to dodge child support. Boulder City City is where the cons are hanging out and damn this dick riding is crazy. We get to Monroe who tells me the great cons are holding some soldiers hostage and I decide to negotiate the release of them. And yeah, surprise bitch, I lived. They tell me Benny took the platinum chip and bolted faster than the drifter's father who should be at the strip at this point. I end up negotiating the hostages release in return for their freedom, but Monroe tells me he has orders to execute the cons anyway and that is something I morally cannot stand by because I gave them my word until I realized they cracked my head open like a Hawaiian coconut and I said, uh, well, you know, orders are orders, and so unfortunately we're going to have to execute them. On my way to the strip, we meet Victor again, who's been following 
following me around like a white K-pop stan at this point. But before we get to find out who was actually in Vegas, I opened the little cheat box a little and set my reputation with the NCR to 100. Now, you might be thinking, what? Why? This is like robbing a bank but taking one of their flyers instead. What the fuck is that gonna do for you? Now, I can assure you that all 23 of my chromosomes are probably working, and we got a message from the NCR courier guy. We get to Camp McCarran and Lieutenant Carey, who can carry me any day, by the way, let me just say, I'll, I'll, I'll continue trying to find Sonny's replacement. Anyway, down cataclysmically aside, we get to the commander who's like, well, you know, you've done such a good job for the NCR, stood by us through thick and thin. Here, take this warehouse key and go nuts. I go to the NCR safe house and dear Neptune, yes, finally, NCR ranger combat armor and some weapons too. Look at me. I look like a motherfucking problem. We get back to business and enter Freeside and stop by Mike and Ralph's where I convinced Mike to give me a passport to New Vegas. Also, I just found out on this playthrough after giving a very convincing no, Mike's got a whole secret stash. Holy damn, no wonder Freeside's so ruthless and lawless. This dude's arming every side. Now you send this guy to Ukraine, he'll have that war over in a week. That's what he needs to be doing. I give my passport, which may or may not be fake, and I'll never stop laughing at this dumb fuck who just stopped in the worst position possible, right between two guards with no passport. And finally, New Vegas. Victor starts Mr. House's quest line, but first, I have to deal with Benny. They take my weapons, but a knife is all I need, and surprise, motherfucker. Anyway, we go to his room, because what I'm about to unleash on him is something you do in private, away from the eyes of children. After knifing him down like the average British criminal, I take his suit, Maria gun, drop my balls in his mouth to assert dominance, and get moving to his suite. Yes Man is the independent way to get New Vegas under your control. It's pretty much like the other quest lines, but you actually have the freedom to do what you want. So there are five factions I have to check out and either enlist, destroy, or ignore. I also have to send Mr. House the way of his ancestors 200 years ago to Hades. And finally, I have to use the Platinum Chip to improve the Securitrons for my use or wipe out the Securitrons, but the problem, they're right under the Legion's main camp. It's like if Russia had super powerful weapons that could win them any war, but but they were located in Zelensky's rectum. Anyways, I head there first and get to the village to Caesar's main camp where slaves are being kept. They tell me to go to Canyon Runner, but he's got Caesar's nuts so far down his throat, I don't even know if I should upload this video to YouTube or the hub. So I have to talk to Caesar first and take the scrapyard raft they call a boat to his camp. This is where it gets interesting though. Caesar tells me to demolish House's bunker under the camp, the opposite of what I want to do. And after using the platinum chip to get to the weather station, I meet Mr. House, who acts and sounds like the reporter from Spider-Man, who wants me to activate the Securitrons, but to work for him. After mowing through some bots, I get to the terminal, upgrade the Securitrons, and mosey my way back up. Okay, now I'm vilified with the Legion who wants my head. What ensues is a perfect performance of me DK Metcalfing my way through and around every Legion soldier as I shatter so many ankles I set back Caesar's plans for months. I decide fuck it and Lee Harvey Oswald Canyon Runner for his key before unlocking the prisoners and I have no idea what happens to them because after my brief NFL stint, I decide to go for gold in the Olympic games and get away from the legion by the hair on my nutsack. I get to the lucky 38 and climb back up to meet Mr. House. Apparently even PCs get lonely as Mr. House built his own wifey and am left wondering if he installed pleasuring software on her and what I needed to do to unlock it. Yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> I finally get to the hidden PC which takes me to Mr. House's real body but only barely as the Securitrons show me what those MK2 upgrades can do. The Walking Dead stunt double says two words before he stops responding even though I had more questions so I kill him reload talk to and kill him again it is even a second time I go back to Yes Man who eventually uploads himself onto Mr. House's old mainframe and now I'm in charge. Securitrons, go bring me Kanye, I got some questions for him. The first faction I go to visit is the Omertas and the receptionist gives me jack all on info so I go talk to Kachino who gives the funniest one line in this game. I banged Lot's wife and licked a salty ass, the fuck do I look like? I'm the one asking the question. After a little pickpocketing the book he keeps his illegal side activities in, he tells 
tells me, all right, fine, I didn't lick her salty ass and help me overthrow the leaders. They're plotting something. And then I go to Troik, who I need to go release from his indentured servitude, which he got himself into because he was caught red-handed in a murder. I go back up to Big Sal expecting a fight, but he's like, eh, okay. And in return, Troik gives me some thermite and says there's some weapons he's been smuggling downstairs that I should probably go blow up. For some reason, they got the whole war chest the US left back in Afghanistan, but after some thermite and activating my Arab superpowers, I managed to get rid of it. After that, it's time. Kachino tells me we got to confront the bosses. Kachino says they're gonna kill you after they talk to you, you know, right in front of their faces, so that's pretty ballsy, and gives me a shotgun with one. One bullet! Honestly, if I'd known earlier how absolutely mentally brain dead this dumbass is, I would've just left the Amertas alone. In any case, Big Sal and his friend give me the whole spiel and tell me they were in cahoots with Caesar, or Kaiser or whatever, and we're going to blow up the embassy and take over New Vegas from Mr. House, which I responded with, Nero didn't tell me any of that when I plotted with him against you. And uh, yeah, I honestly wasn't expecting that to work, but the Omertas are more inbred than the fucking Habsburgs at this point, holy shit. But hey, I dealt with the Omertas, got some chips as a reward, and blew it all on the first game I found, the true Vegas experience. Next up, the White Gloves, where this cowboy is missing his son and asks me to help find him. Marjorie, the leader, doesn't know jack shit about this missing kid, but does tell me to meet up with an investigator who's searching the room of another kidnapped woman, but I go to Mortimer, the other leader, I guess, and he straight up tells me, yeah, we're cannibals and we kidnapped the kid for dinner. Apparently, though, it was a mistake and they wanted another rich dude's son for dinner, so he wants me to use a cow prodder to go get the other guy and to maybe convince the son to kind of sort of potentially keep his mouth closed about the whole ordeal. Anyways, I'm not down for this platform from the Netflix movie type shit, so I go and find the investigator killed before, yeah, this is a prime example of natural selection right here. Anyone dumb enough to find the main character is gonna have their bloodline cut a little short. The investigator was supposed to meet Chauncey later, so I stand in for him and Chauncey tells me that Mortimer is going to feed human flesh to the other white hats and try to get them to go back to cannibalism, which seems kind of flawed, you know, if I eat some beef and some dude tells me that white I just state was in fact a human being, my first response isn't gonna be, yeah, this is great, let's go eat more. But all right, afterwards, an assassin kills Chauncey, so I put him on a shirt with the cattle prod. This weapon has been my MVP throughout the entire run so far. I need to do two things. Get sponsored to join the nightly banquet where the meat is going to be served. Marjorie said, yeah, sure, okay, for some reason, so plot armor, I guess. And I need to take out the chef. I lock him in the freezer before realizing I need to pickpocket the recipe from him and prepare a human meat substitute, which which I do. Anyways, the waiter comes in to serve my one serving of meat to about 50 people. So, I mean, yeah, I, I guess a lifetime of eating other humans wouldn't make me very hyped up for dinner either. And I unlock Ted from the freezer, the son I'm supposed to find to who kickstarted this whole mission, and we go to dinner where Mortimer, who sounds like a fucking Sherlock Holmes villain, tells everyone, ha, you ate human. Time to go back to monkey. Before I come out and say psych Ted's right here, a performance worthy of my ultra moniker, the masturbator. He tries to to run, but the only thing better than my master baiting is my master shirt making, R.I.P. And uh, yeah, Marjorie is also a no-go for a sunny replacement, so my virginity continues. Gunderson gives me 500 caps for rescuing his son, which, you know, a little low considering I saved his son's life from being cannibalized for a few weeks of ammo. Next is the boomers, but tragedy struck. No, my mom didn't die, it's much worse than that. My NCR Ranger armor broke, and I don't have the jerry-rigging perk yet, so I can't even fix it. I was able to to talk myself out of the rope, remove the noose from my neck, and continue to boomer territory though, where this guy tells me, yeah, we'll shoot you at you with artillery on sight, good luck. After a couple tries where I get blown apart so thoroughly my bits and pieces become part of the natural ecosystem, I make it to the fence and oh my god, what is it with these guys and bombs? I thought I was meeting up with some geezers or some shit. Well, I'm not totally wrong as I get taken to an actual boomer who, if I want boomer artillery support in the battle for Hoover Dam, I have to do some house cleaning for. The first quest has Raquel telling me to go kill some ants who are tougher than they look and killed every expedition they sent so far. They're mutant freaks and the ants literally die in one shot. So I guess a life of isolation and inbreeding wasn't exactly the move for the boomers. In any case, I restart the power and tell Raquel she has a Kyle Lowry caboose and the cat calling continues my incel eternal virginity streak. Second quest isn't really a quest. A little kid tells me the story of his people, which uh, yeah, okay, that's great, but I didn't ask you little shit. 
it. The final quest has me help Jack do what I couldn't and get a girlfriend. Problem is, Janet isn't a boomer, so they haven't actually talked yet. He wants me to do that for him, and I think to myself, God damn it, I'm gonna have to reach deep in my bag for this one. Somehow convince Janet to give Jack, who she's never met before, a ch- she likes him too. What's funny is, I can tell her, yeah, sure, go to the boomers, they won't shoot at you, in which I predict they definitely will. But I end up convincing the actual boomer to let her visit and get Janet's boss to cancel her contract and still pay her for work she isn't going to do. So who knows, if YouTube doesn't work out, I might make a pretty good car salesman. Anyways, the last quest has me needing to heal a bunch of random boomers who got stung by some of the ants from earlier, but my medicine skill isn't high enough, so I do another side quest where I have to go get some scrap metal from an NCR base before my lack of sleep catches up to me and I Yeah, you know, I just set my medicine to 100 and healed the injured. I'm not dealing with that shit. Grandma tells me you've proved to everyone you're to be trusted, despite only a couple hours to do so, and we're gonna let you in on our super secret plan. Go ask Loyal for details. The plan? Bring up a literal B-52 bomber from the lake, which is somehow still operational hundreds of years later, so the boomers can have fun. I don't know. It doesn't look big enough to be a bomber, but I place some ballasts and surface the plane anyways. That's pretty much the boomers in a nutshell, as Grandma says she's gonna help us in Hoover Dam, I get to the Great Cons where Papa Khan is convinced the Legion is his ally and won't listen to reason. <laughs> who I swore was a powder ganger two days ago, but is now a Legion ambassador somehow, and finally Regis, who looks like he's high off meth. Anyway, seeing the futility of the situation, I leave, but Regis magically teleports. He tells me he wants my help, but I need to provide proof and convince the other three leaders that the Legion is bad news. I go to Caesar's camp to find proof for Regis, and you might be thinking, didn't they try to kill you last time? Yes, but this time I'm disguised as a Legion soldier and they won't ever figure it out as it goes smoothly until I get to Caesar's base camp and I get jumped. So maybe not my best plan. I literally had to turn AI processing off at the last possible second and while yes, it is cheating, I like to think of it as stacking the deck in my favor. Si uh, okay, I take the info and think, what happens if I kill Caesar? So, like the go-getter I am, I do just that. I go to the ambassador's room who wrote in his diary that the Legion would eventually have to kill all the great cons, which again, I guess these people love writing all the sensitive information down in their diaries. I had to convince Melissa next to is easy, cause the Legion is almost as bad as Blizzard employees when it comes to women, and life as the wife of an officer isn't the greatest thing to hear as a strong, independent woman who doesn't need no man. Last up, we get to the Crack Crafters, and Diane says, no, I want to stay with the Legion, so I go to her boyfriend, who's pretty much what parents think every stoner acts like, and I convince him. I go back to Diane to find out how to convince her, all right, <laughs> gold standard proof that woman can simp too, I guess. I gave Carl's diary to Papa Khan, who kicks Carl out, cause you know, genociding his tribe is the opposite of what the Khan wants, but you know the drill at this point. As I give Carl that permanent melatonin to the cranium, I convince the Khan to leave the Mojave when the fighting starts instead of supporting the Legion, and that's the end of the Khan's quest line. And what do you know, level 14 and jury rigging. Now I can use my leather armor to repair the NCR Ranger armor, and just like that, I have all my powers back again, and it's time for the Brotherhood. Apparently, it's on site with the Brotherhood, and this is actually a defense mechanism, the storm, to protect their lair, as they sing me a lullaby and put me to sleep. So I ended up just ran into their base under gunfire, hoping for the best, and thankfully, the Brotherhood tells me to get naked, bend over, and follow them afterwards. I get taken to Paladin Ramos, who takes me to the Elder, who puts a collar on my neck, which will explode if I leave the fenced-in area, so it's nice to know that the kinky crowd gets their own representation in this game. They send me to deal with a random ranger who set up shop in this fenced area as my hazing ritual. Dobson. <laughs> what a fucking name. My next mission is to find three patrols that went out but never returned, or at least bring back their holotapes, but some other paladin stopped me and says he wants to depose of the elder and find a way to stop him so the brotherhood can go patrolling freely again as this elder is a pussy ass bitch. I go to the archives to find some racist homophobic tweets the elder might have said, but no dice. I end up helping the scribes nailed down a virus before finding the chains that bind. Apparently, there's a set chain of command, so if the Elder gives an order to anyone except a direct subordinate, then he would be breaking the law and therefore deposed. So now Hardin wants me to bring him the hollow tapes because there might be proof that the Elder illegally gave orders to those paladins. Spoiler alert, he did, and off I go. The first hollow tape is in a crater surrounded by some cum spitters or something, while the second is in a museum where the robots still think it's before the nuclear war still. The third one is near Boomerland 
Alliance where I'm not the only one who became a part of the local ecosystem, it seems. I bring all the tapes to Harden because I'm a sucker for drama that isn't mine, and after a time skip, he's now the Elder. I did this mainly because I thought the Brotherhood could potentially help us hold the dam, but no. Apparently I did all this for nothing, so I wasted a good two hours on this quest line. Leave a like and subscribe to help me survive the pain. Finally, I go back to Yes Man and eagerly tell him about all the murder and atrocities I've committed that would make Schmittler blush, and he goes, super! Yes Man tells me that the NCR president, the president, <laughs> is visiting the front lines on Hoover Dam and there's an 84% chance he's gonna get assassinated, so rip I guess. But this means that Hoover Dam is going to start soon and I need to go plug in a control module to help jumpstart New Vegas' reactor, which will let Yes Man transmit the Securitron signal far and wide, giving us a boost at Hoover Dam. I get it done and it's time for the Battle of Hoover Dam. Despite the fact this came out in the early 2010s, this actually feels like a real battle. NCR troops up against the legions in a duel to the death for control of the Mojave, and I'm gonna fuck them both up. My first mission has me infiltrating the control room at Hoover Dam to install the override chip to get those Securitrons up and gunning. Next, I power the Eastern Generator and the Securitrons are running as I sit up top and snipe the legion soldiers as the NCR is nowhere to be found. After battling through soldiers, meeting up with Securitrons, and running trains on Kaiser's Legion like my middle name was Arminius, as we give the Legion their own Teutoburg Forest. But there's a problem. I stocked up on ammo before coming here, but apparently the Securitrons don't follow you to Kaiser's camp, and I have no companions. Like, none. I got more bitches in real life than actual companions, and I'm really using the term bitches as loosely as I possibly can. And these Praetorians are nothing to sneeze at, as their sunglasses somehow give them full head armor, and I can't penetrate it. Eventually, I realize their legs are their weak spot, and I make my way through to who should be Kaiser, but since I Lee Harvey Oswalded him, it's now Lanius, who's got a sweet golden mask. And yeah, I'm gonna need to start a new Me Too hashtag after what he did to me. Next time around, I take the diplomatic approach, and am able to get him to agree to a one-on-one. -on -one. I also realized I can equip armor-piercing rounds, meaning his mask gave him jack all in defenses. After snorting some drugs, I stick the chamber in his mouth, and un load the magazine as I come up on top against the Legion. But I don't have time to enjoy smoking the Legion pack for too long as the NCR busts their way in and says, you saved us. And I reply with, more like under new management. And after he calls me the N-word with the hard R, I get the Securitrons to throw him off the dam, which is so damn cool. And that's New Vegas, that they can and did work and focus on making the story as well made and branched out as possible, which was a definite advantage with each quest feeling unique in its own way. Whether it be finding evidence against the Legion for the cons, blowing up dynamites in the Omertas, this game's strength is its choices, and the way they build each faction, which on the surface might seem simple enough, but you dig a little deeper and find out that each one has its own pros and cons. The NCR, like the United States, but is that a good thing? They kill anyone that opposes them, and the previous regime led to the destruction of our world. The Legion might seem like scumbags, but you can't deny that they keep the order and the people in line. Mr. House? probably the smartest man alive and can help prepare the state of the world to its past glory, as he himself claims that in 20 years he could probably get man back to the moon. But his inability to listen to the populace might undermine his future rule, as the only place he truly cares about is Vegas. And is an independent Vegas the best option? Freedom has its benefits, but is the courier really the best man to run the city? I don't know. The philosophers are still going to argue on the best form of governance and ideology, so we never really answered the first question at the start of this video, but as for the second, well, the truth is, I was the respectable individual in Vegas from the start.